her husband Frank, live in New Oxford, Pennsylvania, which is located about 10 miles east of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Before retiring, Judy worked for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Office of Mental Retardation. Judy is a member of the Adams County Auxiliary and serves as the auxiliary chaplain. She has shared her personal Gideon testimony numerous times beginning in 2007 at pastor's appreciation events, state conventions, and in various churches. Judy and her husband chose to retire in Gettysburg because of their love for Civil War history. Judy is a living history presenter, recreating the person of Sarah Broadhead, who was a civilian living in Gettysburg at the time of the battle. She also sings, plays guitar, and writes Christian music, having recorded several CDs of her music. Listen as Judy shares her testimony via video. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really privileged to be able to share my testimony with you today. Romans 5.8 tells us, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The story I'm about to tell you is a story of miracles, forgiveness, and love. Now this story begins in an apartment in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was a Saturday evening in July of 1984. A woman is standing alone in her kitchen and she had been drinking since early that morning and she had finally arrived at the place she had been so many times before, that blessed state of absolute numbness. Nothing could bother her now, not the haunting memories of what she'd become, not the emptiness and the loneliness and no one would ever hurt her again. Taking a handful of prescription drugs, she made her decision. She would end her life, her life, that at one time was filled with so much promise, so many dreams, so many plans. She loved acting. She was a singer and a dancer, but now she was a hopeless drunk. She couldn't stop drinking, though she had tried time and time again. She had long ago forfeited her decency, dignity, and self-respect. Who would miss her? She was divorced, alone, estranged from her family. So taking a sheet of paper, she wrote God on one side and Satan on the other. Her thought being whichever one wanted her could have her. Well, she started a fire in the kitchen with that piece of paper and then she passed out. Fortunately, by the grace of God, the paper burned itself out without catching anything else on fire. Well, the woman didn't die, and when she came to the next day, in her mind, she heard a voice say, get cleaned up and find an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And for the first time in her life, she took some direction. You see, she came to believe that she had heard the voice of God and God wanted her. Well, that was 37 years ago and I am that woman. And that's how long, by the grace of God, I have been clean and sober. I entered a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center in August of 1984 and I got clean and sober in AA meetings in Philadelphia. I didn't begin attending a church until 1992, and I always thought that that was the year in which I asked Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. That is, until 2007, when a Mr. John Curry from Gideon's International came to our church. Well, as we all know, one of the many services that the Gideons and Auxiliary perform is the distribution of the small, New Testament, personal workers' testament. Well, it was just such a little book that Mr. Curry was showing to the congregation. When I suddenly remembered my own little blue book, I hadn't thought about that book for a long time, but I knew exactly where it was, 
And when I came home from church that day, I took it out of my dresser drawer just to look at it again. I hadn't thought about that book as I was telling you, but I began to leave through it. Um, hope I just wanted to see what it was like. It was so battered and beaten from my clutching it. Now the last page contains what I always refer to as the sinner's prayer. You can imagine my shock and amazement when I noticed for the first time that I had prayed that prayer, signed and dated it on March 31st, 1984. I was still drinking then with absolutely no memory of ever making a decision to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that's why when I wrote God and Satan on that sheet of paper in July of 1984, God answered me because I already belonged to him. And in his time, he delivered me from my addiction. So I always think to myself, no matter what condition we're in, if we sincerely call upon the Lord, he will in no way turn his back on us. As I said to you in the beginning, this is a story of miracles, forgiveness, and love. The miracle being that before I even had a personal relationship with the Lord, he, he took me out of my addiction and saved me. And forgiveness, well, he forgave me all my sins. Why? Because he loves me. What an amazing Lord we serve, amen? I used to write country music songs when I was out there in the world. Songs with such inspirational titles as, I thought you were my country dumpling, but you're just a pop-up tart. I doubt that any of you heard it because it never made it to the top 10. Well, when I got clean and sober, I asked the Lord how I could serve him. Now I write Christian music. He gives me the words and the melodies, and I am only the instrument he uses to record the songs. I was once prepared to end my life, but my Lord had a different plan for me. For one thing, I would never have met and married my best friend and soulmate. Coming this November, if he behaves himself, we will be married 34 years. Well, the road to recovery from any addiction is definitely not an easy road to travel. You have to be willing to change your entire lifestyle. Well, I found the courage to do that in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, when things become difficult, I go to my Lord instead of a bottle of alcohol. Well, I am truly grateful to the Gideons and the Auxiliary to the dedicated auxiliary member who handed me my little blue New Testament, and to John Curry. Without his presentation, I might never have looked at that little book again and learned the truth. I want to thank you, Stephanie, for asking me to share my testimony with you today. I always consider it a great honor and privilege to speak for the Gideons. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. Thank you. We would like to thank Judy for sharing her testimony with us today. A Gideon card.